able to document if you broke them open, inside you could smell some crude oil. And then we had that on film with the Coast Guard too during the buried oil project. Or no, it was during a tarmac find in 2014. So have you been able to look at that? And then is that something we can incorporate? Because they were studying that phenomenon. Yeah. Well, so I have personally got some peat samples from uh, Orange Beach, right? Yeah. I mean, so they shipped it to my lab, and we tried to extract, and I could not get anything. I mean, so we would extract it with a regular standard extraction protocol, shoot it in, flat. We didn't see anything. So at least the samples which I have looked at, yeah. uh, I mean, it, the peat's a very difficult uh, matrix, and so, so we do, but we did our best to, to try. We can't find any signature of oil contamination, at least from the ones which I got from Orange Beach primarily, right? Yeah, but peat is an organic substance, so it can sorb uh, oil. If it came into contact with oil, it would be a preferential <coughs> medium for the oil, right? That's possible. Also, the humic acids and things that are in the, the moisture in the peat, they can kind of trick you and make you think that you're smelling petroleum, but you're really not. So, I mean, it's dicey, but yeah, like Dr. Clement said, like, we've, we've yeah, attempted 20, that. 2012, I think. The, yeah. It's not during the oil spill. I mean, during the oil spill, probably you would have some ad attached, adsorbed peat material, which would have had oil material. But we got a call uh, in 2012. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of peat thing they found, and they shipped it to the lab, and we extracted. We shipped it to the GCMS. Uh, we can't see any signatures, at least those. Like, a couple of times we did that, actually. Uh, but I would, we would love to. I mean, if there is something interesting, I mean, scientifically, it's an interesting uh, sample. I'm always looking for interesting samples. So we would always, we would love to, I mean, if time available, uh, we would love to test something like that, definitely. In the back. So, so during the oil spill, I was actually Florida's rep on Unified Command. I want to go and tie a couple of comments back together, going back to the, the where you end the, the, uh, the spill. When that happened, that was actually a paper that was done by, I believe, NOAA and the Coast Guard, and the states did not have any input into it. And one of the things is when you look at the, the cost of doing business, quote unquote, as far as picking up the oil, um, it was very, in my opinion, inflated cost of doing business between the porta potties that were carried out there and the safety crews and all of the equipment that was brought with them. They had a very large um, carbon footprint associated with it, much larger than it probably should have been but it was used in that computation to justify ending the spill. The other thing that was missing was what is the oil doing to our system, which again, the research that you guys are doing would be incredibly important for future spills to inform that decision. And so I really wanted to thank you and get the item up, up there, is going back to your toxicity question earlier, is you're, you're documenting what's on the beach, but what is really gonna be very helpful for future spills is what is the biological effect of that oil because that's what's needed when you start talking about endpoints. I mean from a tourism economy standpoint, the visual oil is, is a very clear answer. But what's much less known, particularly during this spill, was what is that remaining oil actually doing to our environment from an ecological standpoint. And that's going to be a critical piece of information. So I really appreciate y'all and encourage to carry on your work and bring that into the the ecological effects. And then one last item was going back to the comment about the national seashores and, and um, not wanting deep clean going done. That was another assumption that was made on what that would do to the, to the critters and the habitat. And again, no research was available to say if you did a deep clean, and obviously you're gonna impact the ghost crabs and the other critters, but there was no research to say, would it matter? In other words, would, the, would that, would, that, would they come back after the deep clean? And there was a two-page white paper that came out, which was, <clears throat> it, was a, it was an attempt, I won't say it was a very, it had strong legs. So that's another part of the research, which may be too late now, but is there any way to go back and look at the deep clean beaches and see if those uh, ecosystems have recovered to like pre-spill sort of mm -hmm. conditions? That'd be very helpful for future spills. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a yeah, but that's exactly what we're talking about when it comes to the baseline stuff. And did you have something to add? Yeah, just to follow it up, and I think to tie back to the purpose of, of this research and, and how can we make a difference. You look in March of 1989, you had the Exxon Valdez. Over 90 was passed within a year. Here we are five years after Deepwater Horizon. I would have thought by now we would have OPA 2000, maybe 14 at the latest. But the fact that we're still in the next spill, we're still going to be using the same playbook when we know how, how faulty it was and how, how, how difficult it was for us to, to
to to handle things in our own backyards. Local governments felt if the state was was out of the out of the picture for some of the decisions, the local governments felt extremely um, uh, distant from those critical decisions that affected the the, the, the county. So it, it, I, I would hope that we would, as as a, as a country, come together with a new with a new model. And I think that for, for the uh, baseline monitoring, it shouldn't be on the back of Deepwater Horizon. The, the, the fees that are paid to the federal government through the lease fees that, that for, the, for the exploration and production, uh, separation fees, you have a coastal impact assistance program that funds all the coastal counties except Florida to be ready for coastal impacts and to mitigate and be prepared for these things. So OPA 2016 may not be too much to, to ask. Yeah. Okay, 